Good happy Thursday morning, October 10, 2019. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this morning, so let's begin. First up, U.S. pulling out of Syria is betrayal of Kurds, New Hampshire activists say. Turkey moves into northern Syria as Trump withdraws troops. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. and sheep and all the chowder you can eat in a big parade with floats and marching bands. Well, the president's been saying it's time to end U.S. involvement in what he calls continuous wars. But critics say this move betrays allies and could give ISIS more power. Turkey launched airstrikes and began a ground attack against Kurdish fighters in northern Syria, as Congress and military experts expected. The assault started three days after President Trump announced he was pulling American troops from the region, leaving the Kurds, considered an ally in the fight against ISIS, to defend themselves. We are doing the right thing, and I think the country feels that too. Uh, has to be done, otherwise you're never going to do it. A major concern, the Kurds have been holding thousands of ISIS fighters captive. President Trump says Turkey can now keep them confined, but bipartisan critics have doubts. I know that every military person has told him, don't do this. And this is the pre-9-11 right. mentality that paved the way for 9-11. But two British militants who had been held in Syria are now in U.S. custody. They're believed to be part of the group called the Beatles that beheaded New Hampshire's James Foley, as well as Stephen Sotloff, who attended Kimball Union Academy. With families now fleeing northern Syria, one New Hampshire woman dedicated to helping Kurdish refugees here and in the Middle East says the U.S. should step back in to prevent a humanitarian crisis. Crisis. It's going to create the most disastrous nightmare in the Middle East. You know, um, this is a gift to to Erdogan and Turkey, to to Russia, to Iran. And tonight, senators from both parties introduced a bill halting all U.S. military assistance to Turkey and imposing sanctions, including on the assets of the Turkish president. Tom. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Controversy over potential changes for Market Basket and main development in Bedford. Original plan attended to re- Velatorize area now looking to build apartments. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Siobhan Lopez. and sheep and all the chowder you can eat in a big parade with floats and marching bands. Well, Monica, people are speaking out over the potential changes to these plans, making sure that their voices are heard both by the planning board and the developer. There'll be over 300,000 square feet of business retail. That's what developers were still promising people in Bedford while speaking to News 9 back in March during the grand opening of Trader Joe's, part of phase one of the market and main development. Phase two, which included a movie theater and hotel, is up in the air. A long time has passed without a signed lease, 
So it's time to move on and try and make plans to build out this development in a way that's not dependent on any third parties. The developer Encore Enterprises, based out of Dallas, Texas, presented an alternative conceptual plan that would include retail or restaurant space on the ground floor with 290 apartments up above, mostly studio and one-bedroom units. It could be possible that there's no ill intent here, but it feels a lot like a bait and switch. The original proposal was seen as an entertainment destination to attract families to stay in town. We were sold a town center, something that would revitalize that area. We're getting a parking lot. Residents are concerned about how more apartments would affect schools and emergency services. The developer says they've seen a need for more affordable housing in the area. Is there any way to stop them from doing this? Well, the planning board could deny a waiver needed to build apartments in this kind of zone or the town could spend a lot of money for the land. An attorney for the developer says that they are taking all of this feedback to develop a new plan that everyone can be proud of. We're live in Bedford tonight. Siobhan Lopez, WMUR News 9. Okay, there you go on that video and that report. And that is our question of the day. We want to know, what do you think about their new plan compared to their original plan that they had? Comment below and let us know. Teacher at high school in state prison named New Hampshire Teacher of the Year. English teacher Kim Piper praised for helping inmates reach goals. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Kristen Carosa. and goats and geese and sheep and all the chowder you can eat in the big parade with floats and marching bands. Stand up and give her a round of applause. Commissioner of Education Frank Edelblue made the announcement at the New Hampshire State Prison a surprise for Kim Piper. This is not what I thought today was, so I'm rather unprepared. Piper is an English teacher at Granite State High School inside the Men's State Prison, which started in 1998. She was chosen from dozens of nominees. What I think find, inspires me about Kim is her belief and living out her belief in second chances. Kim began teaching here at the prison in Concord four years ago when she says she never imagined receiving an honor like this. Kim spent most of her career as a middle school teacher in Deering, but then decided to give this position a try. I was looking for something different, a challenge, and um, when the opportunity presented itself, I decided to throw in my application, and it ended up working out, and it's been the best choice. Kim teaches several classes a day in this classroom, helping inmates of all ages reach their educational goals. I deal with a lot of people here who are trying to help, and we're just glad that She's one of them because she's been a huge help to many guys here. Every student is a student. Everyone has an equal opportunity to shine. Everyone has an opportunity in her class to excel. And she just puts everything she has into her class every day. As a teacher, anywhere, you don't always get to find out what impact you're having. Because a lot of times, um, the moments in the day-to-day -day are really tough. And you don't always ever get to find out what impact you had on somebody. So it's nice to know that now. In Concord, Kristen Carosa, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And um, I had her as a English teacher back at Deerfield Community School in middle school when I was in eighth grade and she did a wonderful job. All of us here at the Riley King Network would like to congratulate Kim Piper on winning Teacher of the Year. Congratulations. Former Runlet Assistant Principal not credentialed for 12 years. 
Heather Baker, who recently took a student services job in Merrimack, was not credentialed for 12 years, 12 days, while working in Concord. If you want to read this full article, we will have a link for you on the Riley King Network Facebook page, and it is on the Concord Patch website. Judge to decide whether woman guilty of DWI in connection with fatal crash. Negligent homicide charges not pursued, prosecutors say. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Andy Hirschberger. and goats and geese and sheep and all the chowder you can eat in a big parade with floats and marching bands. Well, Tom, the question before the judge today was a drunk driving charge, not whether the person behind that wheel was responsible for a fatal crash. Don Barcelona is on trial for DWI. Prosecutors say that she was involved in a crash in Seabrook <laughs> last year that led to the death of a pedestrian but she will not face charges for negligent homicide. Prosecutors told the judge that she was impaired the night of the crash and saying that she made some in, uh, failed in the field sobriety test and made some incriminating statements at the crash scene. The defense lawyers say there were medical reasons why she failed that test, and they say that a video of field sobriety mysteriously disappeared and say, there were several other problems with the police investigation. Prosecutors say that they will not pursue negligent homicide charges. I know this does not bring the Dobson family justice or a sense of closure or fairness for the loss of a loved one. No family should ever have to endure this suffering. However, with the state of the evidence and the nature of the unknown that remains, felony offenses could not be sustained in this case. It's been tough. Really, distraught. extremely distraught, and I mean, pretty much we're disgusted by the way the whole thing went. Um, so, there are questions that we want answered, um, and we will get them answered. Now, there is no jury for this DWI trial. It will be decided only by a judge, and the judge took this matter under advisement today and said that he will issue a verdict later. Reporting live, I'm Andy Hirschberger, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Opportunities for practicing in sports grow for girls in New Hampshire. Number of girls teams growing in state. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Mike Cronin. There'll be hogs and goats and geese and sheep and all the chowder you can eat in a big parade with floats and marching bands. As an Exeter High School senior and three-sport athlete, Ray Neal enjoys her busy life. I love sports. I love the, like, team atmosphere, so I think that was always something that my parents especially wanted for me. So, like, I've been playing soccer since I was five years old. That passion is opening doors. Ray plans to go to UConn next year on a partial scholarship to play lacrosse. I've had a lot of great mentors um, for every sport, not just lacrosse, and I think that has made me also want to be a good leader and, like, share my experiences with other people and hopefully inspire others to work hard and be successful in whatever they choose. Balance and gender equality are key to Exeter's athletic program. There are lessons, life lessons, that you can get on the field that you can't necessarily get anywhere else. And the more student involvement, the better. Athletic director Bill Ball has spent the past four decades at the school. Post-secondary education. There's a lot of opportunities out there for them, and a lot of our young athletes, women athletes, take advantage of that. 
the proportion of male to female athletes at Exeter High is about the same. Of the 530 students, 260 are girls. Statewide, the numbers are getting closer to being equal. According to the New Hampshire Interscholastic Athletic Association, more than 23,000 boys played high school sports last year, compared to about 20,000 girls. And the number of teams is increasing. It takes hard work, determination, but if they have the confidence, they will achieve it. Girls Inc. offers programs at its centers in Manchester and Nashua, as well as its schools, to empower girls at a young age. Getting involved, such as in sports, starts with self-confidence. But Girls Inc., they have this all-girl environment. We call it the Girls Inc. experience, where they can try these things and people aren't going to laugh at them and they're not going to make fun of them. So once they try it, they build their confidence and then they'll go out and try out for a team. And in the end, hopefully have success like Ray Neal. Mike Cronin, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that veil and that report. For first time, Joe Biden calls for President Trump to be impeached. Democrat presidential hopeful delivers remarks in New Hampshire. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. and goats and geese and sheep and all the chowder you can eat in a big parade with floats and marching bands. Donald Trump has violated his oath of office, betrayed the nation, and committed impeachable acts. To preserve our Constitution, our democracy, our basic integrity, I believe he should be impeached. Twice today in New Hampshire, Joe Biden called for President Trump's impeachment. The former VP said he tossed aside prepared speeches for the town halls to focus on what he called the gravity of the issues dominating headlines. Last week on the White House lawn, President Trump invited China to play a part in deciding our elections. He did it while standing in front of the cameras and reporters like I am right now in the broad light of day. Biden accused Trump of allowing foreign powers to hijack U.S. elections. And he says he's being targeted by the president largely for one reason. And he did it because like every bully we've ever known and every bully in history, because he's a coward, he's afraid. He's afraid of just how badly I will beat him in November. Biden spent the last several minutes of his time at McIntyre Ski Area discussing gun control, touting his track record against the NRA and his education plan, even seemingly taking a shot at rival Elizabeth Warren. It takes proven ability to get things done. We're not electing a planner. And Biden went on to say there's no one else in the race for the Democratic nomination who has a stronger record of passing consequential election law or legislation than he has. Tom? Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. New Hampshire primary source, Democrat Act. Activist, former legislative leader, Furling endorses Colin Vulture. Impressed by her message of unity, sense of humor, middle, middle, middle American roots. Former state senator Peter Furling has made his decision for the 2020 presidential race, and his choice is Minnesota Senator Amy Kohlenbulcher. He endorsed her today, yesterday. And now let's take a look at your 2020 New Hampshire candidate tracker for today. We have three candidates today in New Hampshire. Tulsi Gabbard speaking at Coas County Democrats annual Truman dinner at 
Mountain View Grand Spa and Resort in Whitefield, New Hampshire at 5.30 p.m. Joe Seastack, he has two events today in New Hampshire. His first event, Town Hall Meeting, organized by local Democrats at Highland Lake Inn in Andover, New Hampshire at 5.30 p.m. And his second event, speaking at Coas County Democrats Annual Truman Dinner at Mountain View Grand Spa and Resort in Whitefield, New Hampshire at 5.30 p.m. Andrew Yang, he has one event today in New Hampshire. He'll be speaking at Kawas County Democrats Annual Truman Dinner at Mountain View Grand Spa and Resort in Whitefield, New Hampshire at 5.30 p.m. Those are the three candidates that will be in New Hampshire today. Dow features slip in wild overnight trading after a report that trade talks have stalled. U.S. stock index features were slightly lower Thursday morning as investors closely monitor the status of high-level trade talks between the world's two largest economies. Suspect arrested after deadly shooting at German Synagogue. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. And next to that horrific image from overseas tonight, an alleged hate crime in Germany, a gunman targeting a synagogue on the holy day of Yom Kippur. Video showing the heavily armed gunman firing down a street, reloading several times. He was unable to get inside the synagogue, but an explosive he tried to throw into the synagogue cemetery missed its intended target. He shot a woman passing by, and then the gunman allegedly firing at a shop nearby, killing a man there. And all of it, we have learned, he tried to stream live. Police now have him in custody at this hour. ABC's James Longman from Germany tonight. The shots ringing out at noon in the East German city of Halle. A man appearing dressed in World War II style military gear, calmly firing and reloading his weapon in the middle of a busy street. The attack carried out at two separate locations, at a synagogue observing Yom Kippur services. This, the holiest day of the Jewish calendar, he tried to storm in, shooting at one door, but it was locked, then unsuccessfully attempting to use a makeshift bomb. He wanted to throw what looked like a hand grenade or a firecracker, but it bounced off the doorframe and exploded, this man says. Frustrated, police say he then kills his first victim before heading to a kebab shop blocks away. Inside, he kills one more before fleeing. <coughs> Nearby residents told to shelter inside. Police able to trace that getaway car, arresting the suspect at 3.30. Tonight, German media reporting the suspect, Stefan Baylet, was possibly motivated by far-right extremism in a nation grappling with an uptick of anti-Semitic and anti-immigrant crime. James Longman with us live tonight at the Holocaust Memorial in Germany. And, and James, this gunman, uh, sadly using a similar tactic of other recent extremists who've tried to carry out these attacks and live stream the shooting. That's right, David. He uh, posted a video of the attack online, but that's since been removed. And he had written about killing people he described as non-whites, especially Jews. But as bad as this attack was, uh, it could have been a lot worse. His gun kept jamming. Those makeshift bombs didn't really work. And thankfully, those synagogue doors remain closed. David? All right. James Longman, live in Berlin tonight. Hi, everyone. Jo okay. And there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Thursday, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.